Now you see, I have these grow bags that I've been using for the pasteurized casing, pasteurized casing mix. Now, it's all right to leave a little in the bottom as long as you square the bag out, let it sit like that, so it can dry out. As long as things dry out, you'll be okay. Another thing too, make sure that you're not using any equipment like five gallon buckets or a scoop or something like that that has bits of the sawdust mixture in it because that will uh, cause mold problems if that gets into your pasteurized project. So make sure it's only the casing mix. In this 32 quart pot, which is the same pot I'd use to boil my grain up, I put a standard uh, metal grate that goes into the pressure cookers in the bottom of it. I'm going to go ahead and scoop this up. You want to make sure that you pick it up from the bottom so you don't have a lot of liquid. You can see, or maybe you can see, there's a, a tiny bit of liquid that's pooling up. But you want to try to continually remix it up as you're scooping and putting into the bags. Now you're going to fill these up pretty much to the filler patch. Now I find I can fit two of these bags well in one 30 quart, 32 quart pot. Whatever size you use, you just want to make sure that you have adequate space around the bags to put water. Because if you don't have enough water in your pot, it's going to be hard to uh, maintain the proper temperature. Now this should be enough to make over, or to case over, two dozen bags of sawdust. I still have a little bit left over to case anything I need in the basement that I've already picked mushrooms off. That needs a little bit of extra casing mix on top to cover up any bare sections of the sawdust or any little bits of mycelium or old fruits that would otherwise go bad and moldy if it was left out in the open. It's gonna, it's gonna fill up high initially, then you're gonna press the bags down to make the space, so you know. Fill each bag up equally in volume. Now when you're cleaning up this stuff, same with the sawdust, you want to rinse minimally down the sink of all this excess material. What I do is I'll, <clears throat> I'll rinse it all into the bin itself and just take it outside and dump it around a tree or uh, in a mulch pile or some other place outside. I'm going to go ahead and kind of tap it down. Yeah, looks like I got a little too much of one. Right, that's good. All right, now let's prepare it to be pasteurized. Close these bags up by taking the outside and pulling it in, the outside corners, fold them on the inside and then roll the top down. That way no excess water from the steam and the lid will drip down and none of that will get into the bag. 
and just take a binder clip like so to keep it closed and then fill the pot full of warmer than normal water but you don't want it real hot just because you want the water to heat up oh about the same rate as the outside of the bag Pour that in there. Now the bags will want to float, so you're going to want to fill it up to about a couple inches from the top of the bag. That's adequate right there. So it was about two and a half gallons. Then use a meat thermometer. You see here that has the post that sticks downward, and you can set that between the bags. You don't want to set it so that it's squeezed in between. You want to make the post so it's a little, about, little bit in the open of the water. Otherwise, it'll give you an inaccurate reading. Just let it sit right there so it doesn't fall in. And then we're going to take a lid. Put it on the top, and you see, you see it wants to float up. So what you'll have to do is use something heavy on top. I just use a 10 pound weight. All right, we're ready to go. Turn your heat on high. And now it'll only take about 10 minutes or so if you have a good oven, or good stove rather, to bring the temperature up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you're going to have to watch it like a hawk when you're first doing this, just so you get an idea of uh, how the temperature is going to fluctuate. But what I do is keep it on high till the temperature reaches 170, and then drop the temperature down to about, oh, I guess you'd say uh, medium low. That's about what the flame looks like when I have the temperature right. A little bit higher than you would for a PC cool down. But again, you're just going to have to keep track. Don't walk away from it for too long. And about every five minutes, open the lid and check the temperature. So I've brought it up to 170 degrees and set a timer for one hour and 30 minutes. Now, the reason why the temperature is a little bit higher than I would for say pasteurizing straw or cottonseed hulls as well as the length of time is a little bit longer is because the bags of the mixture are, are a bit thick so we have to get the temperature a little bit higher and a little bit longer amount of time to make sure that the heat gets all the way to the center of the bags and still reaches a pasteurization temperature there so again, I'm going to keep watch on this about every 20 minutes or so. If the temperature is falling under 170, I'll turn the heat up a little bit. If it looks like it's climbing a little bit, I'll turn it down a little bit. And you just want to try to keep it at that 170 mark. Now, if it goes over 180 degrees, that's too much and you'll start 
sterilizing your mixture instead of pasteurizing it. But if it's there for just a little bit, it's okay with this style project because um, as, as long as the great majority of the material gets pasteurized, uh, any sterilized material will mix in with it and receive the same sort of benefit from the pasteurization. So I'll let this cook and then in an hour and a half I'll unload it and let it cool down. It's been an hour and a half and you can see that my temperature was well managed and it stayed at about 170. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the fire off. And now it's time to cool these bags off because it's going to take several hours depending on uh, the surrounding air temperature before you want to use it. You never want to put hot substrate or hot casing mix together with the mushrooms. It will kill it. So you can just carefully grab the scruff of these bags at the top. Make sure the other one isn't going to fall in when you take one out. And I'm going to take it in here and sit it on a wire rack with a towel on top so it doesn't drip on my carpet. Get the other one here. You want to leave the binder clips on them too and the tops closed. That way they uh, stay as clean as possible. Make sure they're not going to fall over. Now, go ahead and take this filter off. Get the air going a little better. So if you have a good airflow and it's not too hot, it takes probably about four hours or so for it to cool off. You'll be able to tell if it's, if it's hot enough that it makes your hands sweat when you uh, stick it in there. It's definitely too hot to use for the mushrooms. So, I'm going to let this cool down, and then tonight I'm going to case up some of my king oyster sawdust blocks.